In fact, maybe we're looking for something more complicated, like this one. Here I want the 105th term of this list. Now that looks much more horrible. I wouldn't want to sit there and write them all out. You could, um, but I wouldn't suggest it. So let's see, first of all, if this is arithmetic. So from negative 2 to 6, the difference is 8. From 6 to 14, the difference is 8. And from 14 to 22, the difference is also 8. So because of that, I can say, well, it is arithmetic. It is. Um, I can say then that my first term, u1, is equal to just negative 2. That's the first term I have. And I know the difference is positive 8. And if that's the case, then this is easy. Again, I just use my generic equation. I'll write it out. un equals u1 plus n minus 1 times d. This is the equation I use. But if I want the 105th term, then I say u105 equals. And what's u1? u1 is negative 2. I add to that n minus 1. Well, this is 105 minus 1. All that times the difference, which is 8. Well, then I can say that u105 equals negative 2 plus, and this right here is 104. Whoops. This is 104 times 8. And now I need to know what 104 times 8 is. And this would be, let's see here, this would be 104 times 8. That would be, what, 832, I believe. Yeah, so 832 would be 104 times 8. Add to that negative 2, and that's your 105th term. So in other words, finally, u105 then is this, well, minus 2. That's maybe the easiest way to look at it. So it's 830. So you see, you didn't have to write out every single term to get to that. So that's where this formula then, right here, becomes more powerful. You see the reason we have it. Now, what we can do is get even more complicated. So here, find the formula for the general term un for an arithmetic sequence. So here you're told it's arithmetic. Given that u7 is 41, u13 is 77. But there's a problem here. I mean, look, we're looking for un, and un is u1 plus n minus 1 times d. That's what we want. But what's u1? And what's d? u1 is not 41. See, this is the seventh term is 41. I know the thirteenth term is 77. But I don't know the first term. I don't know d. So, should we give up? Well, of course not. No, we're not going to give up on this. We're actually going to just figure out what we can. So let's use this first bit of information here, u7. Well, if we did that, then we would know that u7, let's just use this generic equation here. u7 would be equal to, well, u1, which we don't know, plus, this would be 7 minus 1, all that times d, which I don't know. So do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just writing out what it is that I do actually know. I mean, I'm just writing this information. And furthermore, I know that u7 is equal to 41. So I can say that 41 equals u1 plus, and 7 minus 1 is 6. So this is all I know here. I don't know anything else. So you notice I'm missing u1 and I'm missing d. Let's use this other equation here and see if we can do something with that one. I know that u13 will be equal to, well, u1 plus 13 minus 1, because that's the 13th term I'm looking at here, times d, which I still don't know. But I know u13. u13 is 77. So 77 equals u1 plus 13 minus 1 is just 12. So this is all I know here. So there's a problem. Do you notice with this one equation on its own, I can't solve for u1. Well, I can get u1 by itself, but it'll be in terms of d. I can't get d by itself because it's in terms of u1. So the problem is I can't fully solve this because I have one equation with two unknowns. I have u1 and d. And here I have one equation with two unknowns, u1 and d. In fact, this u1 is going to be the same as that one, and this d is the same as that one. So only when I have two equations with two unknowns can I solve it. So I don't know if you remember how to solve a simultaneous system of linear equations, but that's what we have here. And most teachers teach you to either solve it using elimination or substitution. I'm going to use substitution. 
And what that means is, I'm going to pick, let's say I call this equation one and I call this equation two. What I'm gonna do then is, maybe I'll do this in different color here. So what I'm gonna do then is say that, well, let's look at this then. So u1, I'm gonna get u1 by itself here. I'm gonna to try to get u1 on its own. u1 is going to equal, well, 41. And if I got rid of this plus 6d, I have to subtract that from both sides, so it would be minus 6d. And what I do with this now, of course, yes, it depends on d, but I take that and I put it into here. I substitute it into here. So then I have 77 equals, whoops, maybe I'll do it in color coded like this. So I'll leave it in blue here, so I'll say, so 77 equals, and instead of u1, I'm going to put in 41 minus 6d, and then after that I'm going to say plus 12d. So do you see I'm just plugging in for u1, I'm replacing it, or substituting 41 minus 6d in there. Well then I can just deal with it. I can combine like terms, so this minus 6d and the plus 12d, those can sort of be combined. So in that case I have, let's see, 12 minus 6, that's just plus 6d. And I can move this 41 over to the other side, because I want to get d on its own. So 77, um, let's see here, I would say 77 minus 41, well that will be, what's that, 36. So 36 equals 6d, therefore d equals, well, 36 divided by 6. So in that case, it'll be just 6. Ah, this is something I needed. I needed to know this. Remember, the two things I needed in order to write the general equation is u1 and d. I just found d. And furthermore, because I have an equation for u1 in terms of d, why not use it right here? So here, because I know d, now I take u1, and I say equals 41 minus 6 times, and instead of d, I put in 6. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. And so that's u1. So therefore, let's see now, 41 minus 36, that would be uh, 5. So because of that, then, I can say that u1 is equal to 5. And with that information, then I can finally put it all together and say, therefore, dun, 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 I'm ready to go here. I can say, therefore, un, the generic any term you want, is going to be equal to 5 plus n minus 1 times d, which is 6 in this case. See, I'm just using the general formula here. un equals u1 plus n minus 1 times d. I'm just filling in u1, and I'm filling in d. And with that, then, well, I could just pretty it up if I wanted to. So this is how you would do it. Maybe then I just want to sort of pretty it up a bit. So I could, this is 5, and I could say this is 6n uh, minus 6, I could say. So therefore, if I wanted, then I can combine the 5 and the minus 6 and say this is 6n minus 1. That, I mean, this would be normally correct, but so is this. This is just a reduced version of this. This is just making this a little bit prettier. So that's how we can deal with, you know, one of the harder types of questions you would deal with, with arithmetic sequence. So if you're not told u1 and d, then it's harder. But if you're told, or you can tell u1 and d, like in this first example, then it's really easy. And over here, even if you want the 105th term, Knowing u1 and d, and knowing this generic equation here, that allows you to figure out all sorts of things.